thank you very much, ambassadors. I'm so glad that we are all here today. We thank the Lord. Um, happy Sabbath. Happy day. Happy Sabbath. And happy day. Okay, mm, I'm glad to join today for worship from this side, and I must say that we are blessed to be here. I know a number of church members are also not around, having joined uh, the families that are bereaved, that's the Elder Mokayas, uh, Sister Felicity, Sister Rose, and we join also with them in uh, these moments, painful moments, but we pray that the Lord be with them and the Lord comfort those families in a special way. Um, as uh, we get into the hour, I also want to bring you greetings from my family. Uh, I have I've learned nowadays people say preachers should not be telling us about their families and sending greetings, get to the message of the hour. My family is precious to me. So I dedicate a few minutes to bring greetings from the young boy Brooks who loves me so much. I know he has to be contained somewhere for me to stand here. And receive greetings from Rene. Receive greetings from Lona. I am glad that they are cooperating with me in presenting the message of the hour. Family comes first for me, so don't worry. We will get to the message of the hour. The challenge with the message of the hour is that it's heavily biased towards family, so I must be relevant. Um, ambassadors. Thank you very much. You love me. I know that. In this church, ambassadors love me. That one, there's no question. If ambassadors can afford to invite me to speak on their Sabbath, it's because they love me. These people, I have been with them for several years. I have shared with them tough messages from the Bible, but they still love me. It shows that they genuinely love me. So today, in the event that uh, the message is so tough, love me, okay? But psychologically, just be prepared. It will be a very simple message. I will be preaching for 56 minutes, if not 55. Uh, and I've not started the sermon. I'm still greeting. So... Uh, why I also love ambassadors is when I was called to the ministry by God, I was called with a two-pronged message. One on the prophetic angle and the other one with a bias towards young people. And uh, that's what I have been doing largely. If I was to bring greetings as preachers are supposed to be bringing greetings to their congregation, I would tell you last Sabbath, we had an ambassador Sabbath at Ngong Hill Central, they sent greetings. The previous Sabbath, I was at Alliance Girls, and they sent greetings. The Sabbath before previous, we were having uh, Nairobi, Upper Nairobi Field Station, the other side of the Eastern Field. They had a youth rally, and they sent greetings. Greetings will be too many from the young people, so let me not go to that. Um, I'm now relaxed. I think I can begin preaching. Let's pray as we get to the message of the hour. Dear Lord, it's not about me, it's about you. The message is titled, Handle with Care. Help me handle your message with care. Help me present that which you want your children to hear. And when all is said and done, speak to us. In a, distinct, in a distinctive way. And God, may you bless us all. I ask, Heavenly Father, that you strengthen me in a special way. 
Help me that I may deliver your message with clarity. Not I, but Christ, be honored, loved, and exalted. Increase as I decrease. This is your moment. This is your hour. Take charge. Speak to us is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. My dad. I loved my dad. I lost my dad on the 11th of August, some years back, the year of COVID. But I loved my dad so much, he was my mentor, guided me through so many things. The poet wrote, and I quote, when I was four years old, I believed my daddy can do anything. I turned five years old, I believed my daddy knows a lot. When I was six years old, I believed my dad is smarter than your dad. The day I turned eight years old, I believed my dad doesn't know exactly everything. When I turned 10 years of age, I believed. In the olden days, when my dad grew up, things were different. I became 12 years old, and I said to myself, Oh, well, naturally, father doesn't know anything about that. He's too old to remember his childhood. Then I turned 14 years of age. And I told myself, don't pay attention to my father. He is too old-fashioned. The time I turned 21 years, about to graduate from ambassadors, I looked at my dad and I said, him, my Lord, he is hopelessly out of date, out of touch with reality. When I became 25 years old in the youth, I said, Dad knows a little about it. But then, you should know that because he has been around for some time. When I turned, 20, when I turned 30 years old, I said, maybe we should ask Dad about it, what he thinks before we do things. After all, he has a lot of experience. The day I turned 35 years old, I said I am not doing a single thing until I consult my dad. Then I became 40 years old. And I told myself, I wonder how dad would have handled this situation. He was very wise and had a world of experience. When I turned 50 years old, I said, I'd give everything if dad was here so I could talk this over with him. Too bad I didn't appreciate how smart he was. I could have learned a lot from him. I don't know how to turn 60, so I'll stop the poem at that point. But that's my dad. I am grateful there's a young uh, boy who came here. He was called Elisha Nyarangi, the, the young boy. Now that was inspired. The message of the hour was in line with that one. And, and, and I saw the young boy come and, and he was sharing and he was saying, please forgive. And I almost looked for the mother's number and the father's number and asked them, I have not discussed this someone with anyone but how did you know that we are supposed to talk about this? But the young boy kept singing, please forgive. Let me tell you, because I have started preaching, please forgive. Parents, please forgive your children. Say amen. You're not going to keep quiet on me. I have a short time for a long message. Ambassadors, please forgive your parents. Say amen. And church, please forgive one another. 
And, and, and I felt this is necessary. And this ties with the message of the hour. Our title for the message today is Handle with Care. And when you handle with care, I don't know whether the technical team followed the instruction I had given. There is a poster that the ambassadors shared with me. The original poster that they done for the message. They did handle with care and they did exactly what I had in mind of a broken glass that was not handled with care. Handle with care. I have come to the conclusion that no matter how hot you pour that, you pour the hot tea into the glass, the glass is still fine, but try drop the glass down. It breaks. Handle with care. And, and, and I have read, as I was preparing for this, I, I thought we need to really handle precious things with care. And so in the message of the hour, I am revolving around the fact that when there are things that are valuable, we need to handle them with care. I don't preach from the key text, but today I am impressed to reflect on the key text. John chapter 19, the sin is the crucifixion. Jesus is about to be crucified. And when Jesus is about to be crucified, Jesus reflects on certain things. John 19, reading from verses 26 and 27. Jesus looks at the mother. And when Jesus looks at the mother, Jesus says, Woman, behold thy son. You see, and, and this is a message that we need to reflect on. He says, woman, behold. What does the word behold mean? You see, this, this, this word comes several times when you read the Bible. When you go to the book of Revelation, it says, behold, he comes with clouds. Behold, and behold is used several times. But beloved, when you see the word behold, pay strict attention. Behold is not just like look. Behold is pay attention to details when you are looking at this. Woman, behold your son. In fact, if I was to pick it on my message title, it would be woman, take care. Handle with care your son. And I look on the flip side and, and Jesus does not only speak to the mother. You see, the problem, the problem and the biggest problem we face as a church is most of the young people always think it is the role of parents to take care of them. Young people do not reflect that there is a message that is speaking to them. And Jesus says, son, behold your mother. In other words, take care of your mother. And this statement is given on both sides. He says it to the son, he says it to the mother. Take care of each other. Church members, if we were taking care of one another, do you know how wonderful this church would be? Can I tell you something? If we learned to take care of each other, we would spend very little time arguing about so many things if you are taking care of one another. And, and that's why the reflection is, take care, handle with care. Let me not even uh, speak about this first of all. Let me tell you, in this church, when you see any person has come to church, handle that person with care. Deal with them carefully. You can't stand and say, I don't care. Jesus cares about that soul that has come to church. So handle with care. We cannot look at each other and handle each other roughly. We are supposed to handle each other with care. Let me tell you, it is very evangelistic when you handle one another with care. Very evangelistic. You can preach all you want. You, you, you can extrapolate the 2300 days and, and explain everything but I can tell you one thing if you don't handle each other with care it's nothing handle with care 
Just know that everyone who is around you has been brought for you to handle with care. If you have people in your house, you are living with them, your child, your husband, your wife, your grandmother, whichever the person, just handle with care. Because God would want us to handle with care. And when you handle with care, you thank God for the things that you have. Some people don't have the things that you have. Let me tell you something. Our theme song was 600 and... Which one was it? Which song did we sing? 694. And I like the way when I told the choristers 694 and everyone was thinking, Preacher, what is wrong? Okay, let me explain 694. No, at times we, we have the opening song and it is too long. You don't take time to meditate. But praise God from whom all blessings flow. Now, let me tell you something. Praise God for the people who are around you. There are people who are lonely. Praise God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. And listen to me, ambassadors. If you have parents, praise God for your parents. There are people who don't have parents, so praise God for your parents. I, I know, and we are going to get into that in the message, there are some parents who are tough to deal with. Hey, parents, be good. We don't have to have the preacher encouraging us to praise God for you when there is even nothing to praise God. Okay, but if there is nothing, praise God they are alive, okay? Just alive. As I've told you, I don't have a father, so those of you who have fathers, thank God you have fathers. There are people listening here who don't have mothers. If you have a mother, thank God. Even if your mother is not understanding, at least you have one who is not understanding but is alive. You see, let me tell you, there are people who are hoping even for a, 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 one who doesn't understand, but they are in the grave. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God. And parents, if you have children, praise God for them. Even if your child is a drunkard, praise God, at least you have one. As somebody said, I, 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 you see, even if you have a drunkard, just thank God, at least they are alive. Who knows? They may stop drinking after this sermon. So don't, don't get worried. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. And that's why even church, when you come to church, praise God, you have a church where you can come. There are people who don't have places where they can go to worship. So praise God from whom all blessings flow. Turn with me to the book of 2 Samuel. The message is titled, Handle with Care. Because of those ubiquitous recordings, some of my messages go before me. I don't know if this one goes before me. But let me read for you. Uh, it, it's a passage I love talking about. This one I love. So probably some of you have even heard me preach about it. I love this passage. The passage is 2 Samuel chapter 13. Let me put 2 Samuel chapter 13 into context as we run quickly. In 2 Samuel 13, David's child called Amnon decides to rape David's daughter called Tamar. Tamar is the sister to Absalom. And Absalom hears and gets the message of what has happened. And the Bible says in 2 Samuel 13, 20, And Absalom, the brother of Tamar, said unto Tamar, Has Amnon, my brother, been with thee? But hold your peace now, my sister. He is your brother. Regard not this thing. So Tamar remained desolate in her brother's Absalom's house. But when the king David heard all this, he was very wrath. Let me start explaining. David hears that the son has made a mistake. David 
gets angry at the son who has made the mistake. But David does not address the issue. Parents, please, when your children make mistakes, address the issues. Stop pretending like you don't know what has happened. When they have made a mistake, address the issue. Or else, there's going to be a problem somewhere. Amnon has raped the sister. David does not address the matter. David just becomes angry. Listen, becoming angry is not a big thing. Anyone can get angry. Address the issue. And the Bible says in chapter 20, that Absalom neither spake good to the brother nor bad. For Absalom hated Amnon. For he had forced his sister. Oh, church members handle each other with care. How many of you hate one another? Okay, this is a simple question. You know it. You have the answer, isn't it? How many of you hate other church members? You hate, you hate. Just don't love them. Oh, Okay, let's make it a rhetoric question. In your heart, kindly answer. How many of you hate? As in you see elder chief coming and you're like, again, this one? You hate. Okay, now le le let's, let's preach to those who hate one another. Neither speak good nor bad. Be careful. When somebody comes to church and does not talk to you, be careful. <laughs> Handle us with care. Say hi. Church members, you must greet each other. How do you come to church and you're not even saying hi? Neither said good nor bad. Just walked away. And, and looked at this person and the Bible says he neither speak bad. And the Bible says that it came to pass after two full years. Two full years. Hatred is bad. Somebody can hate you. For something that you committed several years ago and they are holding the grudge. Two full years. I said address your issues. And the Bible says after two full years, Absalom had the sheer, sheep shearers to come. Then Absalom, let me put it into context so that I don't read everything. Absalom went and requested David the king that dad let all the king's son come to celebrate with me. And Absalom asked something of David. Listen to this. In verses 26 of 2 Samuel 13. It says, then said Absalom, If not, I pray thee, let my brother Amnon go with us. And the king said, why should he go with thee? The king suspected there is something wrong. But the king did not address issues. The king said, why should he go with you? But Absalom pressed him. Then he let Amnon and all the king's sons to go with him. Now listen. Why should he go with you? And let me tell you, parents, parents at times, you know, as adults, you have a second intuition. There's something the Lord just speaks to you. Even if you are not inspired, the Lord has a way of speaking to adults. Adults who are in the congregation... Be in touch with God. Be in touch with God. So that when your child wants to go somewhere, you tell your child, don't go. Then the child insists. Then you tell the child, I have talked to God. Don't go. You know, some of you, you tell your children not to go somewhere. And they're wondering, why are you saying like that? Why are you refusing? I can't go. All the other young people are going. They have legs. I have legs. They have Uber. I have Uber. Why can't I go? Just tell them, I have spoken to the Lord. Be, be, be a praying mother. Be a serious father. Come to church. Spend time with God. So that when you tell your child, I have spoken with God. Hey, your child looks at you and says, Hey, dad has spoken with God. And then, parents, this is what you tell your children. Can you also go speak with God to come tell me to allow you go? That's how it should be. If dad, you've spoken to God, God can also talk to me. Who is, what spirit is this that is talking to you to go for disco and telling dad not to allow you to go? Why? What spirit do you have? 
Please, I, and, and, and I don't want to go to the text in Malachi that says the hearts of the fathers will be turned to their children. When the Elijah message is come, the fathers and the children will be united together. Malachi chapter 4. But let me tell you, be a parent who consults with God so that when you give instructions, even your child knows this one is from God. By the way, what do you think used to happen to Enoch's children? Enoch walked with God. When the child of Enoch comes to ask for something, even when Enoch says, I can't give you money, you know God has spoken to him not to give me. The Bible says, he pressed the father and the father said, okay, go. And let me tell you, when he allowed Amnon to go, the Bible says, in verses 28 of 2 Samuel 13, now Absalom had commanded his servant saying, Mark ye now Amnon and smite Amnon when his heart is merry with wine. Smite him and kill him. Fear not. Be courageous. Be valiant. Can you imagine? Two years hated the brother and plotted for the death of the brother after two years. Comes and says, Hey, my servants, when he has drunk some wine, just kill him. And it happened, they killed him. And when they killed him, the Bible says, the message reached David that his sons are dead. Then Amnon's friend who had lied to Amnon to sleep with the sister came and told David, don't worry, Amnon is the only one who is dead. The Bible says in 2 Kings, 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse 34. But Absalom fled. And the young man that kept watch lifted up his eyes and looked. Amnon fled. Absalom, sorry, fled. Absalom went away from home. Handle with care. Absalom went away from home. Let me look at this in context. Did Absalom care about the father? How, how do you just kill your brother like that? Absalom didn't really care. Did Absalom love the father? Well, Absalom ran away. And the Bible says in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 13. Let's read from verses 37. But Absalom fled and went to Talmai the son of Amihud, the king of Geshur. David mourned for his son every day. So Absalom fled and went to Geshur for three years. The soul of the king, David, longed to see Absalom. Longed to go forth after the son. Now let me tell you something. I am convinced, and young people, you ask me to speak on your Sabbath, let me tell you something. I am convinced that parents love their children. I'm a parent. I had to talk about my family so that you understand I am not just talking. I am a parent. When I tell you parents love their children, I mean it. Absalom longed to see. Let me tell you, as a young person, even when you run away from home, just know one thing. There is a father, there is a mother who longs to see you. I, I know at, at, times, at times parents behave like, you know, when I was in high school, we used to learn about uh, chemistry. And you, you know about sodium reaction? The reaction of sodium in water and all that? It was some effervescent. Some parents behave like sodium when they land. They appear in the house and everything is burning. But listen, even if everything is burning, they long to see you when you are not home. Can I tell you something, young people? When parents put curfew, it's because they are missing you. I, I know here you're like, ah, preacher, you're just trying to be relevant. No. When parents put curfew, I am telling you this because your, your parents are my friends. We talk. And, and they just long to see you. But look at the way, you know, in football, we talk of putting a high line. Defensive line is too high. That's what most of the young people do. 
Before parents start, the defensive line is too high. <laughs> offside. Offside trap. High there. So it's too difficult. But these parents, they long to see you. Please, when you come back in the evening, report. Report that I am here. I'm not dead. So don't worry. Because there are parents who are suffering because they long to see their children. I know the child has done wrong. But let me tell you, there is such a thing as parental love. That thing is there. Even the Bible will say, can a mother forget a suckling child? Yes, she may. Not she will. She may. The Bible says that. And, and so, David longed to see the murderer's son. The son was done wrong. David wanted to see that son. I say handle with care. Parents, even when your children have misbehaved, handle them with care. At least long to see them, okay? Hey, parents seated on this side, are you listening? Long to see your children. Let them come home with their mistakes. We will bring them to the feet of Jesus, but at least let them come home. You know, at times, at times as parents, it becomes difficult. You, you say words that even Jesus has never told you. Can you imagine? The things you tell your, your children, if Jesus told you the things you've told your child after your child has misbehaved, would you be alive today? So please, and, and that's why you are a parent and that is a child. Because God expects that your reasoning is somewhere else. Even if you are mad, and, and let me tell you, if you want to talk badly, hey, con contain yourself, go to parents' corner. And complain in parents' corner. How, how does a parent ask the child, how foolish are you? Imagine, a parent. A parent asking the child about the foolishness of the child, knowing that these children have your genes. What are you saying about yourself? What are you saying about yourself? Because the fact that this child is foolish and everything that this child has came from you. So in other words, you've just concluded that when we are looking at foolish people in church, anytime you tell your child that they are foolish, you have concluded that in this church there are foolish people and I am one of them. Please, just tell your child, you know, you are more intelligent than the way you are behaving right now. You've said the same thing but different words. Same thing. If your child does a stupid thing, just tell your child, according to me, you are more intelligent than this. Than this, My genes don't behave like this. My genes would have arrived home early. This one of late coming, this is not my genes. I, I always say that as, as parents, we need to get to the point in time. You know, uh, at times when I preach, things come too fast. I always say, as, as, as parents, we need to get to a time where you can even tell your child, whom have you ever seen behaving like this in this house? You know, at times, the way we as parents behave, you can't make that statement to your children. But, 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 but and, and let me tell you, it's not difficult. Come to Jesus. Jesus will refine you. I saw you were being begged with the camp meeting. I, I was embarrassed. We can't be begging you to attend camp meeting. How many of you are coming for camp meeting? Okay, church, this is not part of Ambassador Sabbath. How many of you are attending camp meeting this year for new life? Not those other churches. I know the habit of uh, waiting for a high Sabbath in Maxwell, you go attend. You are like a church representative going through <laughs> different churches for their high Sabbath. Camp meeting, new life. How many are attending for all the days? Put up your hand. Hey, God is watching. Put up your hand. Those whose hands are down, why are you not attending all the days? And please, New Life Camp Meeting is not online. Now listen. We have online for the others, but you, a New Life member, you are attending in person. How many have taken leave for camp meeting? Those who work. Uh, the hands are reducing. You know my leave days are exhausted. Take for next year. We will pray for that. 
How many are now planning to take leave? Those who are planning so that we can pray for them? Hey, and others are not even planning. Hey, this is tough. Now let me tell you where the problem is. The problem is we've never understood what camp meeting is about. Because camp meeting is a spiritual revival. We are coming to energize ourselves. We are coming to refill so that we are able to go through the next year. The reason we have these challenges we are having is because we are not even planning to attend camp meeting. We have programs, bring choirs, then come to new life during camp meeting. Five people seated here, another five here, and there's a speaker. It's bad. Church, I have said it, I wasn't advised to say, and I know it was expected I would keep quiet, but I have said, that habit should end. Let's attend camp meeting. We, we can argue all we want. Oh, the camp expenses are so much and everything. But let me tell you, attend so that you see where the expenses went. When you don't attend, ah, no, 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 that, that's not right. And, and please, elder, af after this, we need to know how far we've gone with the camp meeting. Please, church, let us purpose to support the cause of God. Let's clear with the camp meeting. Because camp meeting is for your spiritual development. Spiritual development. Camp meeting is actually an investment for us to get better. We cannot handle people with care if we are not spiritually well developed. And that's why we need all these messages from God. The father longed to see the son. But the father could not see the son. Let me summarize chapter 14. In chapter 14, Job, Job, sees that Absalom is away. Job coins an idea to bring back Absalom home. Now when Job coins the idea, Absalom is brought home. The king says in verses 21 of 2 Samuel 14, the king said unto Joab, Behold now, I have done this thing. Go therefore, bring the young man Absalom again. Church, let's go bring the young men again. Let's bring ambassadors again. And that's why, you, you see, one of the reasons I am so excited about ambassadors is because, as I told the church last Sabbath, these are the leaders of tomorrow. They are the leaders of tomorrow. You see somebody like Ren over here. I, I was shocked. I was shocked when I, I understood that among the ambassadors group, they are calling Ren elder. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? He's still a young boy, but they're already calling him elder. Ren, do not disappoint us. Do not disappoint us. We will pray for the nominating committee at the right time that God can speak to them. Because we are already seeing an elder. And, and please, Elder Rabala, plan to retire, okay? You cannot be an elder forever. No, it's true. No, I'm just saying the truth. Elder Rabala, you cannot be an elder forever. Ren was in, in, in kindergarten, you are an elder. Right now, Ren is in ambassadors, you are an elder. By the time Ren is becoming an elder, please, Elder Rabala, even when you are appointed an elder, apologize. You cannot, you, you should say now we need to be in the committee of counseling elders, consulting elders. Those elders who are just old somewhere with wisdom. Then you leave for the others. I know I've said a point that is not popular, but let's continue. <laughs> Handle with care. Let us prepare the future. And let me tell you, Naomi, where are you? Where is Naomi? Seated here. Naomi, listen, there is a vacancy for Head deaconess coming ahead. It's coming. Greta, listen. Assistant head deaconess is coming in the future. It's coming. We want you to be serious now and in the future. We, we cannot be having. And, and I, I've seen so many of my friends here. They are deacons and deaconesses and they've been like that for long. Too long. Can I mention names? Preacher, 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 hold it there, hold it there. Okay. For your sake, I am silent. 
For your sake, I have, I have kept silent. But we cannot have the same head deaconesses and deacons and deaconesses until the next five and ten years. We can't. So please, don't leave the faith. Hang in there. But, 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 but listen to this. And, and that's why we are going to look for a way of getting the young men who have reigned. When Absalom went, Joab planned, bring the young man home. And the young man was brought back. And when I read the story, I am impressed that the young man came back. But I see something interesting. David did not address the issue again. When the young man came back home, please, when your son has come back home after misbehaving, don't keep quiet. Don't allow them to lock themselves in the room. Address the issue. Deal with the issue. That is handling with care. But then, I, I don't know. Parents, help me on this one. This one you have to help me. Elder Ken, you know you are my friend. But you, you, you have to help me on this one. You see, uh, when you are the one who owns the house, and you are the one who pays the rent, how does your daughter lock themselves in a room and you can't access? How? How? And they do not pay for the room that they are locking themselves in. Please, young people, respect your parents. Handle them with care. Do you know how difficult it is to pay rent? Then you come lock yourself in a room. You can't talk to me, the one who paid the rent. Eesh. Ah, be, being a parent is tough. Being a parent needs the grace of God in the 21st century. Because you, you, you've paid the rent... Then a squatter in that house decides to lock you out. No access. Then comes, comes and asks, uh, why, why is there no supper today? Eish. 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 No, 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 no. Young people, you are playing on another level. That, that's a different ball game. As in, please, handle your parents with care. Like I said, it is difficult to look for money to pay rent. The best you can do is once you have been uh, given a room, please behave like you deserve the room. Otherwise, I will evict you. But, but, but what I'm trying to say, handle with care. But let me tell you, David did not address the issue. When the young man came home, the young man was not seated down and spoken to. And let me show you the fallacy of there's a given handling that you think you are handling with care, but in actual sense, you are not handling with care. There's a way in which, if you don't address issues, you are actually not handling with care. And let me tell you, it is going to catch up with you. The Bible says, in 2 Samuel, Samuel 13, 14, 24, the king said, let him turn to his own house. Let him not see my face. So Absalom returned to his own house and did not see the king's face. Now that's not how to address issues. I'd let him go to his room. We don't want to talk. I can't talk to him. He has messed up. That's not how issues are handled. And let me tell you, look at what the young man did. And please, this is not your role model, okay? Ambassadors from Madare, how are you? Yes. Don't say that we are just visitors. We don't know this message. It's for you. In fact, we invited you strategically. It was strategic. Don't think we called you here to come and sing. It was strategic. When we were inviting you, Mojawan, we knew the message you need to listen to. So listen to this. Absalom comes back. Then Absalom cannot see the father. Now I want to show you another characteristics of bad, bad young men. This, this is another characteristic that is not good. When you don't address issues, you are not handling with care. Handle with care. Rebuke in love. Show love when you're correcting your children. It's necessary. Failing to correct them is not love. That's not handling with care. Listen to the text. It says in verse 25, But in all Israel, there was none to be praised as Absalom, for his beauty. 
From the sole of his foot even to the crown of his head, there was no blemish. Hey, young people, how many of you are pretty? Pretty, handsome? And, and, and you know, as a, as a young person, at times you think you are in competition with your parents. As I told you, it's genetics. <laughs> if you think you are beautiful, thank your father. Thank your father. If you think you are handsome, thank your mother. Just be grateful. Genetics. But at times, as young people, you, you, the, 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 things that, the things that the Lord has given you and the Lord has brought to you through progeny, at times those things you forget and they get into your head. Absalom thought he was, he was too serious because he was beautiful. He, he was, and, and you know what happens when you walk with some spring on your feet? And you start feeling, let me tell you, go ask Elder Omo. They also had springs. Right now I know age is catching up. You can't spring. But they had springs. And, and, and as young people, you think you've attained it. We are, we, we are asking you, hey, please, tone it down. Ah, no, you don't tell me nothing. And, and there was none to be praised. In fact, when talking about the beauty of Absalom, Absalom, it is said, that Absalom's hair, he used to keep his hair. How many of you like keeping long hair? Long hair. I understand it's the trending thing. Those of us who have none, keep it low. We are humble. <laughs> the moment you start having some bald head, you become humble. We just keep it low. But the young people I see, the trending thing, keep your hair long. Then after some time, keep it shaggy. Then after some time, uh, when you are coming to church, please, I, I love this. Uh, director, can we have un 52 uniforms for Sabbath? 52 uniforms for ambassadors. Because on ambassadors Sabbath, the ambassadors are smart. Come on a women ministry Sabbath. <laughs> and you're shocked. You see the way ambassadors are dressed. And let me tell you, ambassadors, God is watching. And let me tell you, I am your friend and I know you. This issue of walking out of church as soon as divine service begins. New life ambassadors, stop it. Stop it. What you don't know is this preacher loves you, but this preacher is observant. I know what you do. Today you are quiet. You are sanctimonious. You look like you're about to go to heaven. I can see. But on other Sabbaths, the preacher begins over here and tread softly. Ah, You know, divine service comes with the tread softly. And tread softly means this preacher is coming in. But ambassadors have translated tread softly means tread softly out of the church compound. And I don't like online sermons for one thing. It makes you know when the sermon is about to be over. So that you tread back softly for lunch. We know it. And I have met you a number of times and for avoidance of embarrassment I don't greet you. From today onwards I'll be greeting you. And I will stop and give you the message of the hour at that place. <laughs> because I, I know what happens. You, you know, I, I, I am a preacher so at times I come here for, for service. I, I bring my children for children's class because New Life has a wonderful children ministry. So I come for children's class then I go to preach elsewhere. So you'll always find me here in the morning, somewhere there, then I'm driving out. Then when I drive out, I meet you out here. And I'm wondering, what's wrong with you? Then you hear young people have gone to buy things in Klabu. What are those? Just going to buy funny things on Sabbath? Please, stop it. Ambassadors, it's bad. Hey, handle us with care. Yes, I am doing that. But it's bad. Can you imagine? People are seated here listening to the word of God. And ambassadors are walking out here, socializing and, and going to buy some smoky buns and such things. What are those? Ah, no, no. We, we, that's, not, that's not good. Just stop it. Hey, those who are recording, you can cut out that if they are afraid. <laughs> but let me tell you, the problem is he was beautiful. The problem is he, he started feeling like he's entitled because of his beauty. And the Bible says when you read, 
that Absalom stayed for two years without seeing the king's eyes, king's face. Then listen to what Absalom did. This one, this one was interesting when I read it. In 2 Kings chapter 14, verses 30. Then he said to his servants, See, Joab's field is next to mine. He, he, he asked for Joab to come, and Joab did not come. Then he said, See, Joab's field is next to mine. He has barley on it. Go set it on fire. And Absalom's friends went and set it on fire. Can you imagine? Attention seeking. You know, you know that? You know that one? Attention seeking. If they are not going to come, you are going to seek attention. He went to burn somebody's field just to seek attention. Hey, young people, how many like seeking attention? Attention? You know it? That is Joab. Seeking attention. Who goes and burns the field. After he has burned the field, they had, they had to call for him to come. It's called attention seeking. And, and, and church, I'm not sorry to say this, but young people nowadays seek attention too much. Too much. And I have said it. And I am saying it again. This may be the last time you are seeing me preach on an ambassador's Sabbath from New Life pulpit. This may be the last time, so let me just talk. I'm going to tell you, this issue of young people threatening parents with suicide, please stop it. You are not handling your parents with care. Do you know how it feels as a parent? You've brought up a child for 19 years. Then now they are putting the gun on your head. That if you talk to me like that, I'll kill myself. Do you know? Please handle your parents with care. Handle them with care. Hey, preacher, when will you leave the ambassadors? I'm not leaving. We are together with the ambassadors. And let me tell you, the Bible says, Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. Absalom overthrew the father. Let me now go quickly because, by the way, if I have not landed in chapter 18, the sermon is not over. And I have less than five minutes left. So now we are going to go from 15 up to 16, up to 17. So let's walk quickly. Absalom overthrows the father. Hey, how can you just run past that one? Parents, how many of you have been overthrown? How many of you, you land in your home as a, as a fugitive? You, 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 this is your house, but you, you, are, you are approaching your house treading softly. You are afraid. There are parents who are coming home late because they are afraid to meet their children. Afraid. David ran away from home when Absalom went to Hebron and proclaimed himself as king. David had to run away. Hey, now let's talk. Handle your parents with care. You cannot make your parents to be running away. Please, you can't do that. And, and, and when I look at it, Absalom did all this. But David, because of love, David loved the son so much that David said, no, I am leaving it for you. David ran away. When David ran away, now Absalom plans to kill David. Absalom plans war to kill David. Hey, young people, how many have planned to kill their parents? Planned. I, I've not said I've killed. I've just planned. Oh, or I should have asked parents. Parents, how many of you are, uh, there's somebody plotting to kill you? How many parents were at Mbea Rome Kononi? Let me tell you, parents, and, and this is serious. Young people, this is serious. We cannot have parents, and, and I've said this, I've said, if you listen to the recordings on, online, you will hear me say this thing several times. So I'm even bored of repeating it. But for your sake, I am going to repeat. How many of you have had the experience of working with high, bl high blood pressure pills in your handbags? Before you had teenage children, you were fine. You were fine. Healthy. Just walking with the drinking water. Right now, your handbags are chemists. You have to walk with the painkiller, high blood pressure pills. Because of young people. Let me tell you, and, and then when it comes to Mother's Day, 
Ah, uh, no, you can't do it. At it's, it's Mother's Day or Father's Day. Then you are full online telling us the way the mother is the best person on the planet. Until your mother is wondering, what poetry is this? <laughs> I, I will trade everything for my father just because it's Father's Day. And you know how to get poetic about your father. On Father's Day, please, we don't want Father's Day. Just be good to your parents every day. That's enough. This Father's Day high points we don't want. We will not even read them. Plotting to kill the parents. It's tough. Preacher, who sent you? The ambassadors invited me. Now David is about to be killed by the son. The son has set armies to come and look for the father to kill the father. Now listen to this. And listen to this. Now parents, let's get to you as you finish. You know you, you understand quickly. You tell parents and we finish. You tell parents and we finish, isn't it? So parents, you listen to this one. Chapter 18 of 2 Samuel verse 1 says, David numbered the people that were with him, set captains, thousands, and captains of hundreds over them. David sent forth the third part of the people under the hand of Joab. Another third part under the hand of Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, Joab's father, brother. And another one under the hand of Itai, the Gittite. The king said unto the people, I will surely go forth with you myself also. Now let me explain to you. Do you know why David wanted to go into the battlefield with the people? Do you know why? Do you know why? To protect the son. David knew that everyone was baying for the blood of the son. David said, I want to go to the battlefield. Then you know what? The son did not care about David. The son wanted to kill David. So the servants of David know that if David appears in the battlefield, he will be dead. Now read the text. The text says, but the people answered, thou shalt not go forth. For if we flee away, they will not care for us. Neither even if half of us die, will they care. But now thou art worth 10,000. Hey, young people, parents are worth 10,000. Say amen. And parents, please be worth 10,000. Thou art worth 10,000. Therefore now it is better that thou succor us out of the city. The king said unto them, What seemeth best to you, I will do. The king stood by the gate, and all the people came by hundreds and thousands. Now verses 5. Is serious. Verses 5 says, And the king commanded Joab. The king spake to Joab directly. The king commanded Joab. And Abishai and Itai saying, Deal gently for my sake with a young man, even Absalom. Now listen to that. Deal what? Gently. The king said, deal gently. Church members, deal what? Gently. Deal gently with these young people for my sake. Just for elder chief, deal gently with them. At times, we are not gentle with the ambassadors. We are not. It's tough being a young person in this Adventist church. Adults, you have shock absorbers, but these young people, the things you say can even affect them. Deal gently with the young for my sake. Handle them with care. When you are going, you know what deal gently is? He says, because you respect me, deal gently with them. Handle them in a good way. As in, he knows the son wants to kill him, but he says, deal gently with the young man, even Absalom. And the text says, and all the people heard when the king gave all the captains charge concerning that. All the people heard when the king said, just deal gently with the young man. And you know what? Today, I close this ambassador's Sabbath saying one thing. Church, let us deal gently with the young man. 
Let us deal gently with these young people. Uh, allow me to ask a simple question. And I know you will tell me to ask the church treasurer, and I won't ask the church treasurer. But as a church, what is our budget on character development for young people? What is our budget? I, I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed. This is a problem with me. I speak my mind. I was embarrassed when in the course of the week, ambassadors could not be given uniform. Deal gently with these young people. Can you imagine 25,000 is all that was needed for ambassadors to get a uniform? 25,000. And we could not raise 25,000. How are we dealing with these young people? Do we care about them? Yes, I know you will tell me we have development projects. Yes, continue spending on brick and mortar development. Go ahead. Church, go ahead. Spend on brick and mortar and we will have big churches with no congregation in the next 10 years. Invest in character development of young people. We cannot have ambassadors washing cars for them to raise money to go for retreats. What is that? We can't. As a church, we are not doing well when it comes to character development. These people are given money to buy drugs. And yet, we cannot give them money to go and drink apple juice. How? Deal gently with the young people. We are not doing well as a church. We cannot make ambassadors look to be beggars when it comes to godly things. We organize programs for ambassadors and there is no funding for the programs for ambassadors. Then other things that are not character development, we are spending money. Go ahead. Let me tell you, this church is planning to put up the sanctuary for the Lord. And there's nothing wrong with that. But before you put up the sanctuary for the Lord, please deal gently with the young children. Ensure our young children have character that can be able to get into that sanctuary. Or else, we will have a sanctuary without congregants. And that's when, my fellow elders, we will find ourselves in that sanctuary. And we start saying, oh, this, oh, that. No, deal gently with the young men. We cannot be having mega projects in this church, costing us hundreds of thousands. And yet, a simple budget for ambassadors, we are begging you. We can't. We can't. It's not good. Deal gently with the young men. Deal gently. We are professionals. Out there, we are doing big things. But here, you are begging people to come and advise our ambassadors on career development. Can you imagine? Out there, you are big mentors. Here, nobody cares about them. And I have seen it in this church. When children are in adventurers, all their parents are attending the meetings. Come here on Adventurers Sunday. You will find vehicles parked here. When ambassadors have got an event, you are begging parents to attend. Deal gently with these young ones. The other day, ambassadors were going to Mombasa for a retreat. Parents were literally being begged to accompany ambassadors for the retreat. I, I don't know what happens. Why is it that we love children when they are younger? But listen, these ambassadors, they don't need you to interfere. Just avail yourself. We need you present but absent. Do you get me? <laughs> no, no, you, you have to understand me. We don't need you to interfere, but we need to know that you are there. So if you don't understand, I am willing to interpret what they want for you to do. But parents, we cannot be absent in the lives of our children. Then we are wondering why they are taking drugs. In the afternoon, we are talking about drug abuse. Attend. Church members, attend. I heard the other day, my sister Lynn was begging you people and telling you, Oh, don't sit out there. Don't sit out there. Come and attend in the afternoon. And you don't come. You don't come. Deal gently with these young people. We are talking about drug abuse in the afternoon. Please attend. Attend. 
Because some of the things we are going to tell the young people about drug abuse, you, you also need to help them. There are children who are suffering from these things and they need you to help them handle the situation. And what happens? We've left our children on autopilot. Elder Omo is complaining throughout. Complaining. Do you know how difficult it is to get an ambassador's director or elder in charge of ambassadors? Do you know? Because nobody will cooperate with you. Nobody will cooperate. They will only ask, have you done it? No, 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 no. Deal gently with this young man. Let's cooperate in bringing up children in the Lord. It switched me off. Okay. <laughs> Technical team, you switched me off? Is the message that heavy? Okay, just, just add, add me some, some, little more, some little more so that I close. After this, maybe I'll never preach again here. So you don't have to be worried. Let me just finish. Let me finish. Deal gently. Let, 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 let me finish this, how the story ended. The story ended like this. Job was told that Absalom was caught on a tree. Job commanded that Absalom be killed. In fact, Job went and killed Absalom. Ensured that Absalom is dead. The one who was told to deal gently with a young man killed the young man. Do you know the church that has been told to deal gently with the young people are the ones killing the young people? It's sad. In fact, let me finish it. Let me finish it on this wise. The Bible says in uh, 2 Samuel 18.10, a certain man saw Absalom and told Joab, Behold, I saw Absalom hanged in an oak tree. And Joab said to the man that told him, Behold, thou sawest him. Why did you not smite him to the ground? And I would have given you ten shekels of silver and a girdle. The man said, Though I should receive a thousand shekels, Yet, I will not put my hand against the king's son. For in our hearing, the king said, Beware that none shall touch the young man. We heard it. Beloved, God has told us to handle these children with care. And we've heard it. And when you read the text, it says, then Job said, I may not tarry thus with thee. He took three darts in his hands and thrust them at the heart of Absalom. The people who have been told to take care of the young men are the ones who are killing the young men. Church, let's take care of the young ones. Let me finish with the love of a father. As I said, fathers, let's love our children. Let me show you the love of a father. The Bible says, David sees the messengers coming from the battlefield. And when David sees the messengers coming from the battlefield, verses 28 says, And Ahiamas called and said unto the king, All is well. He fell down to the earth with his face before the king and said, Blessed be the Lord God of thy father, which has delivered up the men that lifted up their hand against my lord the king. And the king asked, is the young man Absalom safe? Church, listen. This is the question you should always ask when you come to church. Are the young people safe? Is the young man safe? Handle with care means we must know whether people are safe. Is the young man Absalom safe? The man did not answer. He said, I saw a great tumult and I knew not what it was. The king said to him, turn aside. He turned aside. And Cushi was coming. Then Cushi was asked the same question by the king. Is a young man safe? I know you're worried when I'm going to finish. You don't have to. I am done. The question, is a young man safe? Handle with care. Church, handle each other with care. Parents,
Parents, handle your children with care. Children, handle your parents with care. But the biggest question we must ask in the church today, now, and forever, is the young man safe? The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you safe.